Thank you for telling us about what it's like to be in medical school. Can you uh, introduce them by who you are? Hi, well, I am Paulina. I am currently a pre-med student um, and I am happy to be here and kind of talk about what it is to be, you know, in the pre-med and its journey and kind of the ups and downs of it all. So, medical school and nursing school is a whole lot different ball games. What are some of the requirements before getting into medical school? So some requirements um, for getting into medical school, of course, is GPA. You want to have a good um, high GPA. Also, um, the MCAT. And there's also um, you have to have volunteer hours and um, patient care experience. That's very critical because they want to see that you are being able you are able to help the community you know around you by the volunteer and are also interested in actually being in the medical field by the patient care experience is there any type of volunteer work experience they prefer over others like would they prefer you being the patient care type of prescribe or would they prefer you being the patient care type or CNA? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, when it comes to volunteer hours and patient care experience, they can overlap. Um, for volunteer hours specifically, you can do, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be volunteering at a hospital. It can be, you know, volunteering at a food bank or at a soup kitchen or just, you know, tiny volunteer events in the campus or in your community, anything of that sort. But um, when it comes to patient care experience, that's when they want to see hands-on um, practice with the patient or with the doctor. You know, you being there, it, an example could be um, being a patient care technician at a hospital. I know that that's a good, easy job that most, you know, undergraduate students can attain without having to get a certificate or a degree. Um, so, yeah. Um, I know a couple of people who are in pre-med programs who say they prefer being scribes versus the actual patient care tech because they see mm -hmm. the medical side of it. Mm -hmm. I, just, I was curious if, the, if there was one that was preferred or the other, whether it was just like all patient care experience, they consider it equal to the other um, selection for many people. Yeah, I don't think... For me personally, I'm going to be applying in the spring of 2024, and um, I haven't been told that there is some sort of bias towards any sort of, you know, like, oh, if you do, you know, patient care technician from the hospital, that's going to be, you know, valued higher than maybe, you know, volunteering or doing a sort of medical job that is prescribed. I don't think there's that bias. Of course, I'm not in the medical committee. So I can't really answer that question um, fully. I said, you're the one going through the process. So I feel like the people going through the process know more than the people who aren't. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So you said the test of policy for MCAT. And is there any other test that would be required to get into medical school? And is there a certain score you have to get on the MCAT in order to be considered that yeah, so that's a good question. Um, definitely there's the MCAT, but then there's another test that not a lot of people know about. It's called the CASPER exam, um, which this isn't a very, you know, as much emphasis as the MCAT because the MCAT is what gets your foot in the door. You know, if you have that good score, okay, we can see that you're proficient in all of these areas and you know, you know, you know your stuff. The CASPER is more so of a exam that is open-ended. It kind of sees like, okay, what is this person's judgment? It's more so ethical questions. And they're just trying to see, okay, does this person have good judgment? Um, so of course, yeah, there's the MCAT and there's also the CASPER. Right. That's a whole, whole lot different than nursing. Nursing, you take T's and ACT which is mm -hmm. more generalized. And then it sounds like with medical school, it's a lot more specialized in like what you need to know. Yes, yeah. For the for the with the MCAT, there's um, four sections. So there's the biochem. I mean, I'm sorry, there's the chemistry and physics section, then there's the car section, 
followed by the chemistry and biology section, and then it ends with the psychology and sociology section. So it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but once you're, you know, as a pre-med, you're taking all these courses and everything, and if you take the exam while you're studying for those courses, it'll be a lot easier than you think. So the MCAT is a beast, but it's doable. Every, you know, there's a lot of doctors out there. They've been able to do it. We can do it as well. So this is, you all know if you know the answer to this question or not, but what's the difference between medical school and residence? Yes. So, all right. That is a very good question because initially, uh, as a pre-med, I always thought they were kind of like, okay, the same thing. You just do medical school and then you're a doctor, but that's not quite the case. So when you get accepted into medical school, you do four years of just medical school. Two years, the first two years are called didactic, which is you're in the classroom, you're learning, you're learning the diseases, you're learning, you know, the different body systems, and then that's that. Then the second two years of medical school are clinical rotations. That's how it's called, clinical rotations. So you go through surgery, you can do family medicine, psychiatry, um, general surgery, uh, different specialties like that, dermatology, I guess, um, anesthesiology, things like that. And so you rotate throughout that. So I believe in your third year, that's when you apply for residency. So residency is your official medical training in that particular specialty that you choose. Because as a doctor, you specialize in one area, right? So if you wanna be a family medicine doctor, you choose the residency of family medicine. And um, I believe that the um, application is called ERAS. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's where, you know, as a medical student in your third year, you would apply there. In your fourth year, you would do interviews. And by March, um, you would have your match day, which is you get matched into your residency. And then you continue on and you do your training. So that's medical school. Residency, your first year is going to be your intern year. So typically that's internal medicine. Um, then the next couple of years, you, residency can any, be anywhere from like three years to seven years, which the surgery residencies are going to be more lengthy than the non-surgery residencies. Um, and so the first year is always going to be intern year, and that's typically um, internal medicine. After that, you go into the specialty that you want to do. And a ma as a matter of fact, not many people know this. I actually didn't know this, but you also do rotations while in residency. So even though you're going to be a family medicine doctor in your residency, you might be doing a rotation in internal medicine or in neurology, let's say, or pediatrics. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But yeah, that's the difference between medical school and residency. Quite different, but part of the same cup of tea. So with that matching process for residency, do you just apply to a bunch of different residency programs and then they just pick you based on whatever you apply to? Or how does that work with the match process? Um, so I'm not know. too, yeah, yeah. So I'm not too familiar with the residency match program, but... I know that you kind of, uh, you apply to certain schools, right, that offer the residency program. Um, and they, the, it's a system where, that's why they call it you match, because you apply for them, and they give you, you either get an interview or not, and if they pick you, you know, you match up, right? So it's just a matter of whether you find fit in that area, in that hospital, in that community, and whether they find fit in you as a candidate. Um, so it can be very tricky sometimes because what ends up happening is that there's a lot more applicants than there are openings. And there's actually this um, program, I believe it's called SOAP, for the people that don't get matched into a residency program. So they graduate from medical school, but they don't land a residency, which means that they can't practice as a doctor, which is, you know, pretty upsetting. And it's actually a big um, kind of a dilemma, I guess, in the med in medicine. Um, but there is a residence uh, program called SOAP that allows them to kind of like reapply next year. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure how 
the match pro like the matching uh program works specifically but that's as much as i know okay so you explained it in a way that for people who aren't going to do it can understand it so you still do a good job with explaining what you know oh thank you and I guess we can wrap up about the rest of stuff because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But is, oh, there, any, is yeah. there anything you would like to tell pre med students or anyone wanting to go into the medical profession about starting medical school, going to the pre med program, or just anything in general? Yeah, of course. Well, um, being a pre med, I think many of us know, is not an easy task, right? There's these courses, and we have to do volunteer and you know, shadowing and all of these different things. And sometimes you come to the point where, um, can I do this? Is this actually something I can do? But what I want you all to remember, all the pre-meds out there, is that if this is really something that you know you want to do and that you feel like you have the desire to do it, you will be able to do it. You know, just keep on moving forward one step at a time. And the next thing you know, it, you'll be right there. So don't let fear take away from the future that you want to have, because at the end of the day, once you get there, you know, you'll, you'll be, you know, enjoying it and everything. So just keep moving forward. I feel like that was good points of advice for future doctors out there. Yes. And I will plug all your socials in the description box down below, but is there, would you like to um, go ahead and tell everyone where they can find you at? Yeah, so as of right now, you can find me on Instagram by at pow.in.premed. And I just kind of post, you know, kind of day in the life sometimes, lifestyle and a lot of pre-med tips, you know, just trying to make a community of collaboration with the pre-meds and hopefully, you know, document my journey to medical school and beyond. Well. Sounds like you're doing a good job. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to following you on your journey as you become a future doctor. And just hopefully everything runs smoothly for you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You Bye. Too.